Cooler's Revenge is definitely one of the weirder movies in the Dragon Ball canon, as Cooler as a character seems to pop up in places he really isn't supposed to, like in the timeline of the Daizenshu, the cover of Fusion Reborn, and the GT anime. The story, like the other Dragon Ball films, is relatively straightforward and can generally fit within an accepted canonical time period. So, what if? In an alternate universe, instead of just being a movie, Cooler was a 100% canonical and official arc in the Dragon Ball manga. What would happen, and how would it impact the story that occurs afterwards? Today, we will answer that question. In this scenario, the idea for the Cooler arc came to Toriyama sometime during the Namek Saga. While he is never referenced by name, slowly more and more mentions of a mysterious someone is referenced by Frieza and King Cold. First, when Frieza mentions that it's the first time that he's been hurt by anyone in ages while in his final form, instead of just mentioning his parents, he just says his family. The second time Cooler would be referenced would be by King Cold at chapter 138 after Trunks kills Frieza. Instead of offering for Trunks to become his new son, he would mention that he'd rather not have Frieza's siblings lose one and that Trunks would take Frieza's place. Trunks brushes this off all the same, and the events of the Mecha Frieza arc would end the same as they do originally until right before the end of chapter 142. As instead of a time skip happening, we get our first look at Cooler, sitting on his throne and getting a message that a mysterious second Super Saiyan has appeared and killed Frieza and his, and his father, the entire thing being recorded on the scouters of the defeated Frieza soldiers. Just like in the original movie, Cooler decides to take revenge and come to put the Super Saiyans down for good, especially now that they even seem to be popping up and unaliving his family. This explains why Trunks does not warn about Cooler, as in his timeline, Cooler decides that Goku by himself is not enough of a threat to concern himself with. It's multiple Super Saiyans that are the problem. After this point, the course of the story takes a completely different turn, so I will be describing it fully like a narrative, interjecting with a few explanations along the way, but for now, let's jump right in to what we were going to call the Cooler's Revenge Arc. Two years after the Z Fighters have begun training, a ship pulls into orbit outside of Earth. Oddly enough though, unlike the two years prior, none of the Z Fighters notice the power levels of anyone on the ship, and thus are completely unaware of its presence. Before we find out who's exactly on board, we cut directly to a training session between Piccolo, Goku, and Gohan. They are in the woods somewhere, and they are training. It appears at first that Piccolo is the strongest out of all of them. After a flex of his ki, he sends base Goku flying. Goku remarks how it's, he's, it's so amazing how much more powerful Piccolo became after fusing with Nail, but Piccolo just brushes it off. Goku hasn't even turned Super Saiyan after all. Piccolo suddenly looks around with confusion. Gohan is gone. Goku closes his eyes and tries to sense Gohan's ki, but feels nothing, meaning that he is knocked unconscious. More concerningly, he can't sense any strong keys nearby that would have done this. Goku and Piccolo decide it's smart to split up, each bidding to fly around the forest looking for where Gohan is, without luck. We cut to Gohan's whereabouts and find him being held by his head unconscious by Dore and Salsa. They discuss that while this kid does match the description of a young Saiyan, he's still too weak to possibly be the one who beat or killed Frieza. But, as he's a Saiyan nonetheless, he could become a Super Saiyan. They should kill him now. Just as they're about to kill the half Saiyan, a Key Blast flies towards the ground and explodes around the three of them, forcing them to drop Gohan. It's Piccolo. Due to his enhanced hearing that he demonstrated a few chapters earlier, he was able to hear their entire conversation and find out where they were hiding. Piccolo immediately picks up on the fact that the aliens' uniforms look very similar to the Ginyu Force and asks if they are henchmen of Frieza, who have been hiding out on Earth and plotting their revenge. Before he can get much of a word in, all of them attack Piccolo. To his immediate surprise, Piccolo realizes that all of these henchmen are far more powerful than any of the Ginyu Force members. He hadn't sensed their key before, not because they were weak or anything, but that they knew how to suppress it. As this battle begins, Gohan wakes up, watching in amazement as Piccolo battles these two opponents. The two of them surprisingly seem to have the upper hand on Piccolo, overwhelming him with their superior numbers, and eventually, Salsa slashes off Piccolo's arms and send him, sends him flying to the ground. Piccolo makes a weak plea, asking who their leader is. Wanting to grant Piccolo's last wish, they oblige and tell Piccolo that their master is Lord Cooler, Frieza's brother, and that they are here to eradicate the Super Saiyans who defeated Cooler's brother. Piccolo laughs and thanks them before immediately growing back his arm, quickly firing a ki blast at Dore that unalives him instantly. He had of course been faking his weakness to get information out of them, thanking them for the info. But before Piccolo can defeat Salsa, he suddenly blasted straight through the chest by a death beam. Just like on Namek, Piccolo has been caught off guard by an attack from behind by one of Frieza's family. Cooler has arrived. He commends Piccolo for his treachery and ability to handle his armored squadron, marking that he would have made a wonderful henchman. 
Gohan, surprised by Piccolo's sudden defeat, suddenly explodes with anger and rushes at Cooler with a surprising amount of power. His rage and training combined to temporarily make him a formidable fighter. Salsa is shocked that this kid was hiding so much power, wondering if this is what a Super Saiyan is, being stronger than even Piccolo. Cooler is unfazed, however, as he casually blocks all of Gohan's attacks, the half Saiyan quickly beginning to run out of steam. Cooler files a large blast with him to finish him off. Gohan realizes in terror that this guy is way stronger than Frieza. Gohan's eyes go wide as he's about to be killed, only to suddenly find himself at Kami's lookout, Goku's hand on his back and Piccolo's body thrown over his shoulder. Goku has used instant transmission and saved all of them. Goku sets Piccolo down, quickly explaining to Gohan to get Piccolo a sensu bean and for Gohan to get into contact with everyone else. If this guy was strong enough to beat Piccolo in a single shot, they couldn't play it safe. Before Gohan can argue, Goku teleports back to the spot, finding Cooler waiting for him. Cooler smiles, knowing that Saiyans couldn't resist a fight and that Goku would show up sooner or later. Goku asks what Cooler wants, Cooler simply explaining that he wants a guarantee that his empire remains unperturbed and that having all these Super Saiyans popping up is no good, so he's going to do the job that Frieza couldn't do. His key aura immediately flares up. Goku is taken aback by the power, noting that it far surpasses Frieza. Confidently, however, Goku instantly transforms into Super Saiyan. The two of them begin their battle, each dodging and blocking most of the other's attacks as the forest around them is blown apart. They eventually break off, Goku grinning as he finally figured out why Frieza always called himself the strongest, despite Cooler's obvious strength. Cooler has key control and even taught it to his men. Cooler confirms that he's correct, revealing that he also has not been going all out, knowing that Goku has also been holding back. With both of their secrets out of the bag, the two of them throw themselves into the battle in earnest, Goku remarking that this is the first time he's gone all out since Frieza. The fight wages on, both of them using their signature techniques, Cooler managing to even cut Goku's cheek with a death beam. As the battle goes on, however, Cooler begins to gain a tremendous upper hand. Goku's stamina is dropping way faster than Cooler's. After another exchange, Cooler suddenly lands a heavy blow on Goku, sending him flying into the ground and causing a massive explosion. Standing up from the ground, Goku is clutching his chest for some reason, Cooler landing in front of him. Knowing he's already won, Cooler begins to gloat. You should feel honored. You're the first, and soon to be the last, to witness my ultimate transformation. Well then, ready to kneel? Goku watches on in horror as Cooler body shifts and changes until it finally turns into its most terrifying appearance. Final form Cooler. Now it's time for you to die. Okay. Wow. This ended up being way longer than I thought it was going to be, so if you want a part 2 in this series, please, please, please comment down below so I know to make it. I've never done like a what if kind of story thing like this before, so please let me know if you like it or if you want me to stick to the power scaling stuff. Thank you for watching this far. Uh, there's really not any take for you to disagree with, but comment down below how I'm wrong anyways. See ya.